guys this is a big subject and one of the most probably important subjects because cardiognosis or telepathy or remote sight is a group it's a group of senses that you have through which you can feel different timelines you can feel what decisions you need to make you can feel god's thoughts you can feel a person's thoughts you can feel animals the stars galaxies nature storms all kinds of things it's a synchronization realm that you have as a person now in church circles as you know they call this kind of thing new age and they shut it down so i'll give you an example when i went to one of the largest prophetic communities in the states they told me not to use two words there were two naughty words which i wasn't allowed to use um, one of them was teleport apparently teleport is naughty um, so I wasn't allowed to use that word and they told me in the green room that I wasn't allowed to use the word telepathy either so both of these ideas teleport and telepathy were um, you know not not welcome so but strangely television is okay in everybody's home which is pretty much the same thing tele means remote and Pathy means empathy or emotional connection or compassion. So telepathy, all it is, is you're, you feel a connection with someone. You feel the love vibe remotely. You can hear and see and sense that how they're doing. Now, everybody's okay with television in their homes, right? But why don't we want telepathy? I think religion shuts it down because when you have telepathy or cardiognosis, you can see what's really going on in the spirit. It changes business meetings, it changes um, church board meetings, it changes everything you do, who you hang out with, because you can read their hearts. Now, our aim is not to be condemning or unkind, is to love people. But why we need to read each other's hearts is we need to know what level of government a person has, where they're at in life, if they've got problems. You, for example, if you read a person's got problems with drug addiction, say, and you read it through cardionosis, you wouldn't put them on your leadership team. You'd work with them to deal with it. So you're not trying to condemn people. You're trying to actually get to a place where we all see each other clearly and we love each other unconditionally, but we are tele telepathic. And it works with animals. It works with nature. So cardionosis, let me, let's go into this deep today because you're going to want to open this up. I think by the end of today, it will open up to you in a, in a new way because this is so, so powerful. So let me read a verse for you. It says, for the Lord searches all hearts and minds. I'll say it again. The Lord searches all hearts and minds and understands every intent and inclination of the thoughts. Hey, for as he thinks in his heart, so he is. So that's 1 Chronicles 28, 9 and Proverbs 23, 7. There's two things here from the very beginning. The Lord searches all minds and hearts and understands every intent and inclination of the heart. Point one here, right at the beginning, is if the Lord understands every thought and inclination of the heart, we should too, because he is the blueprint of us. He is the blueprint of what we are made of as children of God. If he understands everybody's thoughts and intents and heart, so should we. It is totally normal for us to understand it. So point one is that everything in heaven operates through cardionosis. Often when you're in an encounter, you don't need to say words. They'll read your heart. You will read their hearts. This is very, very normal in the realm, okay? Secondly, this doesn't come from being judgmental or unkind. That's legalism and law. This comes from just knowing where people are at. So I've always said to the Lord, judge me and search me and know me now. And I've always given my team and friends and family access to my heart. And there is no secret sin in my life because I feel like I live, live surrounded by heaven. I'm surrounded by saints. I live closely with Rach. We share life completely together. And with the team, we all connect. So this heart knowledge. Now, I see issues in people all the time, but I don't worry about it. I engage love. I feel like seeing people's issues is okay we're not going around judging people and i'll explain this now it's more understanding how we govern how do we work with people how do we deal with their weaknesses how do we deal with their strengths because the other side of 
cardionosis is you can see people's amazingness as well. And that often blows me away more than their problems because I'll look at them and go, you are limitless. You are a new creation. You've got a limitless capacity to grow. And I see them through deep time, it's called, where I see them as an infinite being because every single person on the planet right now is just in their infancy. We are all going to exist. Like C.S. Lewis says, when the stars and galaxies are passed away, we will still be alive. So I don't judge someone on where they are now. I, I, I do mm. read them Good. and I do look at their heart, but it's not in a condemning way. It's more like I want to see what their powers are, their talents. Now, when I'm really strong in union, I will often hear people's thoughts as well. Sometimes when people have come to ask me a question and I'm really in a strong state of union, I'll actually hear what the, the frequency of their thoughts. And I'm going to explain that to you now because there's a science behind this. OK, now, the second part of what the verse I just said, which is Proverbs 23, says, as he thinks in his heart, so he is. So we are engaging the heart. The heart is the realm that we're looking for, this inner being. Josh, put the first slide up with the heart on it. Let's just think about the heart for a second. Every religion that's out there puts the heart at the centre of the story, whether it's um, Buddhism or Hinduism or Christianity, all of them, the heart chakra or the way of the heart in Buddhism um, or, you know, in Christianity, as a man thinks in his heart. And we're going to come into this. The heart is a thinking organ. Now, your brain processes data your true awareness is a deeper being and it's more connected to the heart and this is a new area of science and i'm going to go through this tonight so cardionosis comes from the heart the key organ is the heart and you could call it awareness so when you talk about a person and say are they a good person we often say they have a good heart because the heart is the main frequency that you put out of the body it's your main it's got a, a network of neurons in it it's got over 40,000 neurons inside it. It's also responsible for creating a wave pattern that goes throughout your whole body. And it sends four times more signals up to your brain than it gets from your brain. In fact, the heart regulates the brain. And another amazing thing about the heart is the heart knows the future before it happens. They've done many, many experiments now where they'll show people images on a screen and they're measuring the brain and the heart. And the heart will know if it's a good or bad image before the brain does. So the heart is actually the organ that senses the future as well. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So what we're looking at today is to activate this to another level. How would you like to be in a business meeting and know whether you should do business with a person? Or what if somebody says, I want you to meet a friend. They're really great. Do you want to go by the person's word or do you want to go by um, the truth. So let's say you were invited to talk to a president of a nation. They might have a reason for calling you in, but you've got to be able to see in the heart and speak from the heart. And often people say to me, how did you know that? How did you know that about me? Because it's not facts. It's about the heart. And the heart is emotions. The heart is a vibration. The heart is love. So sometimes we say somebody smells fishy, for example. It's a common saying in British culture. A person might smell fishy. So smelling is what? A fragrance. When you're smelling someone, you've got a fragrance that comes and <laughs> it's a frequency. It's not an actual nose. It's a frequency in your heart where you detect the signal the person's putting out. Or have you been in a room with someone that's depressed and you suddenly feel depressed? Or you're with someone who's joyful and you feel joyful. Why is that? Because if we go to, the, I'm not sure if it's in the next slide or not. I don't think it is. It might be further along. Our heart feels interact. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Okay. Right. So the dictionary in my book, Beyond Human, I defined using dictionary.com what telepathy is. It's the communication between people of thoughts, feelings, desires, involving mechanisms which cannot be understood in terms of known scientific laws. Now, here's the first point here is that those kind of definitions are totally false because science does understand these laws and has been studying them for over 80 years now. So this book here, um, Entangled Minds, 
If you want to get one book that will show you 80 years worth of research on this, this is a brilliant book. They've done studies with husbands and wives. They find they go into heart sync at night and they, they, their rhythms go into union. They found that we can know things remotely with twin studies where they show a light to a twin and the other twin in the other room will show on brain scans that they can see the light. People hug each other and um, remotely and they'll show that they are being hugged. And I've written loads of notes in here because it even shows we've got precognition that in our hearts we can read the future. Now, this is all science. This is not woohoo. This is not weird. These are empirical studies that for the last 80 years or more, in fact, 90 years. So in 1882, the name telepathy was conjured up. 1882. So it's not a new age idea. In fact, it's in every culture in the world. So it's in every society, every culture. It's throughout the Bible and it's throughout time. So it's not a new age idea. It used to be called thought transference or mental radio because they knew that thoughts were being transferred. So they thought it must be like a radio. Now, in 1930, a man called um, Upton Sinclair wrote a famous book on this called Mental Radio. And Einstein wrote the foreword to it and said this, that mental radio deserves earnest consideration. So. Even Einstein felt this should be explored. Now, my question to you guys is why has it not been explored? And why have schools not been teaching on this when there's a, nearly 100 years worth of evidence that the heart is not a pump, but the heart is an electromagnetic field generator? So there's over 100 years of evidence that, that, um, that the, brain, uh, the heart is, is a brain and the heart releases a field like a tape cassette, which we can read. OK, so why are they not talking in biology about the heart? I, my son was studying the heart recently and they still say it's just a pump. Did you know that it produces, it sends the signal for hormones? It's responsible for love hormones. It's, there's a brain in your heart. It's, it's a, called the small brain now. It sends a wave pattern out and this wave pattern can go 10 feet out and interact with another person. Now, you, you remember cassette tapes. Some of you on this call are old people like me. Now, old people remember cassette tapes, right? And they used to chew up and used to play music on them. Well, that's a magnetic strip. And basically the field that we send out is magnetic and um, it sends information like a strip and you can read each other's magnetic field. If you're sitting next to a person, you're inside their magnetic field. Now, if you learn to tune into heart, knowledge you can hear their thoughts or you can feel their emotions or you can feel where they're coming from this is normal it's the same thing is with animals this works with animals horses cats dogs different animals go into heart sync with a loving loving owner okay so this book has got lots on it now let me just say this Another thing that's a lie that we're taught in school and in church, because church and school are the same system, they are part of an institution of control um, that keeps your mind suppressed. We're told that we've got five senses. How many times have you been told that you've got five senses in school? The truth is you've not got five senses. You've got a minimum now of at least 30 senses, which we're learning. Let me just tell you some of them. You've got thermosensors, which detect hot and cold. You've got spatial awareness, where you know your location in a, in, a, in a place. We've got movement sensation, where we know up and down, left and right. We've even tell if we're being watched. We have a sense of being watched. This is scientific now. That I'm giving you real evidence here. We also have time senses. Have you ever set the alarm to get up because you're going on a flight, say, and you'll wake up one minute before the, flight, the alarm. Yeah, that's true. Your body will synchronize all night long, counting the minutes, and wake you up. Now, one of these senses is electromagnetic fields. We can sense biophotons, electrons, energies, vibration, and frequency. We can even sense, th this, is, this is a new area of science, we can even sense the electromagnetic field of the Earth. So you know like birds use it to fly around the Earth? we can also tune into it. 
we know where we're geolocated on the earth we and we can sense it so josh if we could go to slide one the next slide here so we're talking about fields of energy so your heart produces a massive amount of energy and it's huge the amount of bio outputs you've got you actually put out biophotons of light called carrier particles now those carrier particles go into the people around you and their bodies swallow the carrier particles and can make molecules from them as well so we're actually not only are we exchanging information we're exchanging substance with each other this is called quantum entanglement now the more you interact with the person the more you'll be entangled into them like with a husband and wife you'll have a lot of particles that are quantumly entangled now let's go to the next slide so the magnetic field of the heart this is from heartmath.org or .com i don't know what the website is heartmath our thoughts and emotions affect the heart's magnetic field which energetically affects those in our environment whether or not we are conscious of it so we create this vortex shape and we're always interacting with each other if you're in a conference for example full of lots of people we will then form a cohesive synergistic field so for example when you are in a worship team you will all interact with fields and you'll form a, what's called heart coherence where the wave pattern will be consistent from you all i'll show you on this uh, over here if we can flick to this for a second josh so if you're out of coherence you have a jagged jagged wave pattern form that's called incoherent but if you enter into states of loving kindness sweetness and joy you will change it to what's called a coherent state which is smooth and then other people will lock into it and all have the same pattern this is when we reach what's called optimum flow when we go into a coherent state we can do music together art we can play together we can predict each other's movements we can move in synergy and it changes your blood pressure your respiration and all your hemispheres start to power up over 20 minutes the, the whole light spectrum changes until your brain locks in with your heart and you are creating a strong energy field and all the light particles start emanating out of you in other words you're kind of transfiguring you're starting to release a different frequency a different fr and it's through love so this is kind of the wave pattern of love joy peace patience kindness creates a smooth flow and nasty emotions like envy jealousy anger create a jagged incoherent flow where it breaks the connection between your brain and your heart so your brain and your heart only connect well here when you're in a coherent state so why am i saying this because to become cardiognostic to be aware you can't be in the low emotions of anger and hate and all of those you have to go into elevated emotions of love and thankfulness and awareness of now where you're living in the now and you lock into the now so you're not in your thoughts thinking about tomorrow or last week you're in the now you have a heart lock in then the electromagnetic field powers up and you start to sense how the animal's feeling or you sense how your friend's doing remotely if you are in a busy brain you will be in an incoherent state and you will not be sensing your friend you will be stuck in your mind so part of cardiognosis is moving from the mind to the heart that's how it works so that's how we sense then angels that's how we sense beings that's how we sense the lord's presence is we tune in so if you're in a meeting it's all rah rah energy this is why I'm not a big fan again of the prophetic movement. It's all rah rah energy. Like God's saying this, God's doing that, rah rah rah, 24, you're at the door, and it's all hype energy. If you're in hyper energy, you're, you're de synchronizing. You, to be in the union energy, you have to go into the, the deep. You have to go into the be still and know. You have to go to a different frequency way pattern so it's the same in an argument you won't be able to sense how the person's feeling if you're caught in the argument you have to step out of the argument into love into joy into peace through breathing as well breath work by the way breaks the pattern 
to what they've discovered. If you just focus on your breath for one minute or 10 seconds, just letting everything go and you focus on your breath, you will break this jagged pattern and you will start this pattern. So your breath is designed to reboot you back to coherence. Your breath is designed to be a trigger for you to come back into shalom and be present in the now where I feel you, I sense you. So we can use the breath at any point just by focusing on the breath, I mean. So you're not thinking about your thoughts. You're, you, you can say things like this. I am breathing in and you breathe in. I am breathing out. And I breathe out. You do it again. I am breathing in. I can feel it already. It's a shift. Did you guys feel that on the call as you did that? So another thing you could say now is beautiful. Breathing in now is beautiful. Now I can feel God's presence. So God's presence was there all along, but you have to get into the heart realm to sense God. And then when you're in cardionosis, you can tune in and sense, well, is it an angel that's there? Is it the spirit of wisdom? Is it one of the saints? So we, this technology of cardionosis is amazing. It also helps you choose the right restaurant to go to or the right person to meet because when you feel through the timeline, The way it works with timelines is this. I don't know what's happening there. My drawing just went weird. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay. So imagine that's a person. <laughs> <laughs> it's a person. It's a time. <laughs> timelines. In front of you always are multiple timelines. And your spirit is able to feel the different choices that you're going to make. This is all part of cardionosis, okay? So there'll be one timeline that has a stronger energy. That's the best timeline. What you can do is you can sense when you go to spend your day. I do this every day. I sense which timeline has got the most energy on it. So, for example, shall I go meet my dad for lunch today? Shall I go out with Rachel for a walk? Shall I pray? Um, shall I Zoom someone? When you're thinking, you will feel different energy levels. That's your cardionosis going through the future. The feel can scan the future. And in fact, I believe deja vu is when you've scanned the future already. So you've gone through the future and scanned it, and you've already felt that day. So I often use this. Now, this is a very powerful method, okay? And I'm going to come back to it in a minute because this will actually help you if you've got food allergies. So um, scientists say that one of the, 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 the signs of a food allergy is you'll have a feeling of foreboding before you eat the meal. Now, this is actual science fact. It's listed in all the books and advice. My kids have got peanut allergies and stuff. And they actually get a feeling of foreboding. So we were at a restaurant in the summer and Beth was ordering a meal she's had many times in Indian. But in this restaurant, we hadn't been there before. She had the feeling of foreboding. So she asked them, has this got nuts in it? They said, no, I don't think so. But they went away and they came back and said, yes, it has got nuts in it. So she didn't eat that meal. Now, if she hadn't li listened to that, she would have gone down a lower timeline. Mm -hmm. where she had the allergy and she would have gone down a timeline where she was sick and we would have had to have gone home and given her medicine instead she had a better timeline because she used cardionosis to detect that there was um, an allergen inside the food now this is the same with going to a restaurant have you ever gone to a restaurant and it was a bad restaurant, but you knew it somehow before you went? And you always say in those situations, oh, I knew it was going to be like this. So the thing is, we have to tune in to the best line. When you think of your friends, which one should I spend time with? Think of the energy. It's very, very subtle. Your spirit will go through the timeline because 
your body's in today, but your spirit isn't. So um, the Lord showed me this. If you imagine the days of the week, your spirit is not located just in today. It's bigger than today. It's going through the past and future as a bubble, as a wave pattern. And it can go very, very far into the future. It could go right through your timeline. So using cardionosis, you can choose which business deals to do. Now, I've been invited to participate in a number of business deals, but I knew they were going to fail. And every time on paper, it looked good. The money was coming in. It was all working out. But I knew in my spirit that this was totally not right. It's the same with buying a house. You can use this to scan the timeline. And how does it feel when you think about buying that house or that house? Tune into the timeline. For example, Rachel's mum was going to buy a house and I just didn't feel good energy on it. And then we saw another house and there was massive energy on it. And that's been the right house for her. So cardiognosis can be used to follow energy. Energy. It's an energy detection device that you've got for interacting with timelines to learn to discern which is the best timeline for you. So I'll give you an example. With going to Fiorella's conference, I felt a strong energy. I was like, come on, I want to be there. And then I created a timeline where I was there. I engaged the quantum field and I chose a timeline and I, and I put it out there. I hope she invites me. I'd like her to invite me. I think it was the next day or something, I got an email from her inviting me. So not only can you see the timeline, you can create the timeline that has the maximum amount of joy for you. The maximum amount of joy for you. Wow. Way. Is this good, Rach? That's brilliant. So let me recap what we're saying so far is that the Lord knows everybody's thoughts. It comes from the heart. We're meant to be the same as the Lord and our heart is an organ that interacts with other people, but we can interact with space time. We can govern space time using cardionosis. So you can tune in when you're going to make a decision, gently tune in to the timeline and feel the cardionosis in your heart. Remember when people say things like my heart wasn't in it. That's because they, your heart was saying that's not the timeline. Look for the timeline that produces the, the most coherence, the most energy, but don't operate from being upset or stressed or angry. You have to move from love and en the love energy. Otherwise, you'll make decisions from your head. Don't follow your head. Follow your heart. These sayings are already in our culture, by the way. Follow our heart. So there's a lot of evidence that we have all these extra senses. We can sense electromagnetic fields. We can sense if someone's watching us. We've got spatial senses, thermo senses, gravimetric senses. And then in the spirit, we have other senses again that are beyond here. OK, right. So the whole planet is going to become, become telepathic. So even though when I was at this prophetic conference, they told me not to talk about telepathy, um, I've got news for them, and I'm saying this in love, it's too late. This is coming upon the earth. Now, in Fiorella's conference, there was a guy there called Nicholas. He said the new technology can tell by the tone of your voice if you're telling the truth. The new technology can tell by the vibration of your voice if you believe the thing you're saying. So even technology will be able to say whether you're telling the truth. They also have got new brain technology, which I've seen online where they can turn your dreams into images. So all of this stuff is coming. In fact, some of the new aircraft used by the military use the brain frequency to do some of the processes automatically. So no matter how much religion says this is new age, it's too late. It's coming through technology. It's coming through evidence. It's coming through heaven. Because in heaven, this is how everybody operates. They operate through cardiognosis, heart to heart. And it's a very beautiful thing. Now, Howard Storm, as you guys know, I've mentioned it before, was a guy who died and went to Sheol, the grave, and he was an atheist. He died in the 1960s. When he was there, he cried out for Yeshua and Jesus came as a spark of light and picked him up and saved him after he died. So you can still get saved after death. And 
He was taken up with the saints into heaven and he learned lots of mysteries about the cosmos. He learned mysteries about Jesus. He became a powerfully beautiful pastor after this event. But one of the things that's unusual, he was taken into the future. Now, it was around the year 2185. Somewhere around there, he was taken by the Lord and it was so glorious on earth, he thought he was in heaven. And they laughed at him. He said, no, this is earth, the future of earth. Now, in his book, I recommend you get it. It's called um, My Descent into the Grave or Death or something, Howard Storm. And he was taken to the future. And I, I want to write something that he saw. He said this, there will be countless small communities of people all over the world, and each one will have its own identity and culture. There will be many different languages, but all people will be able to communicate telepathically. There you go, telepathically. He said everybody was a student of nature, which they knew immediately and they could communicate with it immediately, knowing the sensations and vibrations of every part of creation. People explored outer space without moving an inch. People communicated telepathically and everyone on Earth had relationships with intelligent beings on other worlds. There was no space travel because there was no need. People stayed put and shared life experiences across galaxies. Amazing. Now, I know I'm saying a lot there, so can I just go through it for a second with you guys? I'm hoping you're enjoying this. I think this is a great topic, and I'm giving you a lot of my history in this session because I've walked with this for years, and I've never taught it quite like this. But basically, in the future... People could govern plants and they would grow instantly for their needs. They could govern the weather through cardiognostic technology. The whole Earth's weather patterns are governed by humanity by 2185 around there. We're not sure of the exact date. Everyone's telepathic and everyone's aware of other intelligent beings like us on other planets. And they can see them and interact with them through cardionosis. They can also see and interact with each other through cardionosis. And nature responds to them. And everybody's sharing their life experience through cardiognostic technology of the heart. So this is coming, guys. This is why we're in the time of forced change. Um, I call this, I guess this is the last century of history as we know it. Going into the 2100s, the whole world is going to rapidly, rapidly change. And yeah, bring it faster. We can by doing the beyond human stuff. Because this is another thing with cardiognosis, is that if enough people engage an idea, it's called a multiple effect. Mm. it becomes a thing called the morphogenic field. So when enough people have an idea, in the morphogenic field, knowledge is then exchanged across a species. Now, this is weird, guys. They've done lots of experiments on this, but if enough human beings think a thought, others start thinking the same thought. It also happens with animals. They've done experiments with mice and rats where they teach them a maze. Then they'll try the experiment in another location and the, the rats or mice will, will know the, the maze faster. And this is why we have to keep changing IQ tests, by the way, because we're passing on the knowledge to each other. So they have to keep making IQ tests harder because the way our knowledge is spreading is called morphogenic field theory. Now, if enough of us start to create a future of love, joy, telepathy, kindness, it will become the future. This again is why I don't really like the dark end times philosophy, because if that's what you believe, that's what you'll put out into the morphogenic field. But what we should be putting out into the morphogenic field is harmony, union, love, illumination, wisdom, transcendence, glory, joy, bliss. Then we become the covering of the culture and then the, the the thought pattern in the culture that goes into everybody's hearts are oh, this is a place of love this is a place of joy 
This is a place of safety. Now, when you go into a region, you can tap into that field and, and feel what is the, the vibe of an area. Have you ever walked into a restaurant or a, a city and you feel that this city feels exciting or this place feels sad? Or you go to a restaurant and it feels like the manager's really cool. I'd love to work here. Or you go in another restaurant and it feels bad. It feels stressed. So I use that all the time when I travel. When I go to a church or a ministry, I will engage that morphogenic field, the quantum field. I will engage cardiognostic technology. And one of the things I'll often detect is what is the angel? Because you will feel the angel of the church in the field. And I'll often know a bit about a, a, a church by the angel that I detect in the field. I'll also know about the, the level of government that a place has and the maturity of the place by the morphogenic field. And often when I'm preaching, I will open my spirit right over everyone and I'll often hear people's thoughts. So somebody will be questioning what I said and thought, I wish you'd explain that. So sometimes I'll jump around explaining things because I hear the thought of the person that's out in the congregation. And the way that I do that is by... by by this simple method that we can all do, I expand my heart. I just make my heart big. So if you have a small heart, you'll have a small cardionosis. So one of the ways of making your cardionosis big is, is, is breathe in and then open it up and fill the room you're in with it. Fill the room with your field so you can read the room. And then do the same with the town you're in so you can feel the energy vibe. Like the town we're in here, there's a lot of poverty and sickness, so we're going to change that. But I can also feel God's dream for the area, which is that there's music and creativity and joy. So you can also feel the negative field and the positive field. Our job is to land what God's dream is, so that you know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So God is never thinking bad thoughts about us. If somebody is prophesying negative thoughts, They've tapped into the wrong field. You need to tap into God's thoughts and God's blueprint and God's strategy for a region or a business. Okay, so cardionosis. So this is normal for us. Listen to what it says about Jesus. It says he won't judge by appearances. This is Isaiah eleven three. He won't decide on the basis of gossip or hearsay. He'll judge the needy by what is right and render decisions on earth's poor with justice. Paul also said this, the spiritual man tries all things. He examines, investigates, inquires into, questions and discerns all things. So this is an important point. If you really want to be used by the Lord powerfully, you have to untether from gossip. You have to untether from people's opinions. You have to untether from, from what you're being told. So I'll give you an example. I once met a leader and someone told me this guy's amazing. And um, I walked past him in the washroom and we bumped shoulders. And when we bumped shoulders, I, I read his field. And I saw that he wasn't a good guy at all. He was a very angry man, very bitter, um, was harboring a lot of resentment in his life. And he wasn't a good leader. I went away from that event and I happened to be with someone who worked with him. And I said, what do you think about this man? And they told me exactly what I read. They, they worked with him. They said, he is, he is a harsh guy. Um, hang on a second. We've got a screen share going on. Great, we're back. Don't worry about it, guys. These things happen. So my friend was saying, this guy's really glorious. And if I didn't have cardionosis, I would have gone, yay, you're amazing. And I endorse you. You're a leader. But because I bumped shoulders with him, I read his field and literally visions went through my mind. And I could tell he was a very bitter, resentful man. Anyway, this person who worked with him told me that's exactly what he was like. He says he worked with him on a construction site or something. And the guy was just awful, angry and aggressive. Now, often the problem with a lot of us is that we are going by opinions, not by cardionosis. And we're also then missing who the glorious person is in the room as well. Because often the glorious person in the room isn't necessarily the one with the microphone or the title. Sometimes I meet like old women that pray and they're shining and I just can't get over how amazing they are. 
and I get blown away by them. So, you know, this is so important that we can read. So it says by, with Jesus, he won't judge by appearances or by hearsay. Mm. This is definitely an era with fake news that we can't go by the internet. We can't go by what people are saying. And also we have to see through the eyes of love. So let's say, for example, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention this because this is a current issue. We all know what's going on at IHOP with Mike Bickle and the tragedy. So there's all this infighting going on. But when I look at what's going on with IHOP, I see all these people who are so precious not seeing the best in each other anymore. And I think there has to be a moment where, yes, there are consequences. Yes, there are boundaries. Yes, the, the, a discipline process has to be outworked in friendship and love. But at the same time, we have to see each other through love. We have to see each other through Papa. Then even when people blow it, it's not over for them. There's more to the story. We all can grow. We can all change. We can all learn. And yes, people have to deal with the consequences of their actions. I'm not excusing anyone. But I'm saying we have to have a heart of love like for each other as well. Because I'm seeing a lot of people fighting on Twitter and it's brutal. They have to get out of the energy of pain and anger back into the energy of love where we see each other. So the main aim of cardionosis is like an avatar. I see you. I see the real you. I know you've made mistakes, but beyond that, I can see someone so beautiful. Oh. I think we have to be moved by beauty to be part of this next age because immortality is not from law. Immortality comes from grace. Yes, things will have to change. Yes, it's not okay that these leaders abuse their power. But the question again, coming back to cardiognosis is, if we had a cardiognosis culture, no one would be able to hide these things because we'd sense it in their energetic field. We would know it. We would be aware of it. This is why we can't shut down cardiognosis anymore, not just for our sake, but for everyone's safety so that we can read each other. OK, there we go. A scre screen share came up again. Um, I could say so much about this. I could write books and books on this because cardionosis, Rachel will tell you this. I've spent years developing this skill, haven't I, honey? And, um, and I think like we have to return to, to being able to operate in it. When I read the Celtic saints and I look at the past, they all could do this. For example, when people came to confessional in the Catholic church, often uh, people would say, I think you've forgotten a sin. And they would tell them the sin because they could read their heart, but they weren't judging them for it. They were helping them. It's the same with the Celtic saints. There's this one story where, where a guy runs away, he's a thief. He goes to um, one of the Celtic monasteries and says, I want to become a priest. And he lies to them. He doesn't tell them that he's a thief. They read his spirit and say, actually, we can read you. You're a thief. You've run away from a crime. But the Lord says, you are going to become a brilliant priest. Welcome to the monastery. So they still accepted him and he became an amazing man. So that's the power of cardionosis. You know the person where they're coming from, but you create a better future for them. And I think that's what we start, have to start to do in the body of Christ. When there's all these crises going on is we create a better world for each one of us. That we can say, yeah, I get it. You've done this sin. You've broken this rule but I see you beyond it and I'm going to mentor you and help you grow in government. Oh, wow. This is such a good topic. Whoa. So Paul knew this. He said this in 2 Corinthians 5, 16. We do not know anyone in a purely human way, in a purely human fashion. So we have to start to know each other, guys, as, as more than human. Reading each other, knowing each other, hearing each other's thoughts. It's okay. Because we're all the same. We all make mistakes. We all have weird, random thoughts walking in the light. Mm -hmm. Okay. So cardionosis should be a goal. Now, let's come back to the... To, I want to land this session now by saying there are five levels of cardionosis. I'm going to go through them real quickly that I think we should all operate in. One is knowing God's thoughts. So, Josh, if you can get up my slides. This blew me away recently, guys, when the Lord showed me this. Okay, sorry, that's the earth field. That's good. 
I just forgot to mention this, is that we also interact with the Earth field and this communicates information. It's made of the same stuff as we're outputting. So even Earth has got an energetic system of exchange of knowledge, which we all interact with. Okay, great. Let's move on. So into the divine. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Here's mystery number one. And I never thought of this until recently. The Lord taught me this over the last year. The number one thing he wants you to use cardiognosis for is looking into God's thoughts, looking into his intentions, looking into his being. And he showed me this through taking me into a realm. So I'll show you the next slide. He took me into this realm, which I call the cortex of God. And in this realm, I could see the thoughts of God in creation, the mind of God. And there were other people there observing it. Wisdom took me there and there were like seats there for us to engage and to sit around the thoughts of God to know his intentions. Wow. It felt amazing. It felt ethereal. It felt wonderful. OK, next slide. I know that I, what I have planned for you, says the Lord, I have good plans for you. I don't plan to hurt you. I plan to give you a future filled with hope. So if we read God's heart more, we would not give bad end time prophecies because when I've looked in God's heart, there is no evil there. There is no bad there. There is no negativity there. It's full of good thoughts. What I have planned for you, plans for hope and a good future. <laughs> See, we have to align with the gospel. God is happy. It's the happy gospel. It's not the miserable gospel. God is the glad happy God. Now, the Lord Jesus himself took me into another realm and I've asked Josh to create graphics for this. So we're going to try and show you this. So the next slide. It looked like this, guys. No, no, go back, Josh, the water. The water. It looked like this, but golden water, golden water cascading. Now, this was like the thoughts of God going into creation. And it was the biggest, it was much bigger than this, and it was golden and glowing. Now, next slide is what happened. The Lord Jesus took me into the middle of it, and I was inside the waterfalls of the thoughts of God. And in there, I could see all of his thoughts cascading into this realm for everyone, for everything. And he told me, this is where I want my people to live from in these days. I want them to live inside the thoughts or heart of Yahweh, where you can see the golden fountain of plenty cascading into creation. And I want to tell you again, guys, when I looked at it, there was no evil in God. I could see no darkness, no evil, no hatred. There was just pure love energy, pure kindness energy, evolving, transforming, transmuting love. And so I asked Jesus for a verse for this, and this is what he gave me. It's the next slide. That he would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep, oh, in the deep and intimate knowledge of him to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally. Whew. I never understood this verse before. This verse is a realm. It's a realm we are in the deep. The Lord called it the fountain of the deep. Wait, let's go back up again, Josh. The previous slide is where you're inside the fountain of the deep in, in wisdom, in revelation, knowing the profound insight. This is where the whole body of Christ is going to operate from in this age. This is where we're going to see from, function from, operate from it's not the prophetic it's the source we're going back to source knowledge the cortex of god where we're inside the the fountain of the deep accessing the fullness of his heart called the mind of christ Woo! wow next slide josh and move on to the next one the secret of no go up again sorry the secret of your life now is you're wrapped up in Christ, in God. So we're in God. And he raised us up together, made us sit together in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ. 
This is a heavenly realm that you can choose to engage with in your meditations. Sit inside the fountain of the plenty or the cortex of God and allow the, the, the frequency to move through you. And you will see it. A great mystery that all is well. So I'll quote Julian of Norwich here. Jesus said this, I have the power to make all things well, he said. I know how to make all things well, and I wish to make all things well. Then he said, I shall make all things well. You will see for yourself, every kind of thing will be well. By saying I have the power, he's referring to his authority as the Father. I know how, coincides with the wisdom of the Son. Saying I wish points to the volition of the Holy Spirit. The entire blessed trinity is unified when he says, I shall. And where he says, you will see for yourself, I believe he includes the whole of humanity. So go back up a second, Josh, to the light when we were just on. So in his thoughts here is that all shall be well. Now I know we can't see that right now. We see people who've done terrible things. We see the church is a mess. We see ecological situations. But the Lord said, I will make all things well. Now that's the frequency of Yahweh. If you can live in the all is well, wow, and all shall be well, whoa, you will be in the fountain of plenty. You will be flowing from source knowledge. You'll be flowing from being in the mind of God. Amazing. Okay, so number one is know God through cardiognosis. Number two is know yourself. Let's go on, Josh. To the meditation picture. So all around the world, people are starting to meditate. Meditation is the practice of awareness. I'll say that again. Meditation is not a religious thing. It's the practice of, um, of awareness and consciousness, where you become conscious of your body. You become conscious of your emotions and your mind. So we need to use cardionosis to know the Lord first. And then know you. How am I thinking today? Is my thinking busy? How do I feel today? Am I upset? Am I sad? Am I happy? Is, how is my body? Am I stressed? Am I okay? Now, during meditation, you get to know those three things and you bring them back to coherence. So the aim is if your mind is busy, you say, I let those thoughts go. They are not now. Now is beautiful. If your emotions are upset, you allow yourself to experience them, but you breathe into love. If your body is tired, you rest or you move it and you do movement meditation and you let the tension out. You can shake it out. So meditation is the practice of returning to yourself, which is teshuva in Hebrew. Teshuva means return to yourself. It's the same word as repentance. So when we do meditation, even for five minutes, we reset the mind, we synchronize the heart, and we, we are kind to the body. Hey, now there are a lot of meditation techniques you can learn to do this. Body scan, the RAIN technique, which is about awareness, heart locking, loving kindness, casting cares. I want to recommend a good book at this point. It is written by a Buddhist, or as, you, as Americans say, Bo Buddhist. Um, if that offends you, maybe it's not for you, but I don't find it offensive. She doesn't really mention Buddhism much. She just teaches practices of loving kindness. Her name's Sharon Salzberg. Real happiness. This one comes with audio meditations. And I found this one very ha helpful when I was learning meditation. Because the aim of meditation is to be kind to you. So with cardiognosis, use cardiognosis on you. And if you're feeling sad or it's a hard day, breathe and be kind to yourself. See someone that brings you joy. Do a hobby. Do painting. So you need cardionosis to understand yourself. If your thoughts are busy, just see them as clouds in the sky and let them go and return to the beautiful now. I'm enjoying now. Now is beautiful. I let that thought go. That's a worry. You can label your thoughts as well. You could say that's a worry. That's a memory. That's an idea. And just let them go or write them down. But come to a place eventually where your heart is really still and you're in the moment and you're enjoying it. And when you're with your husband or wife, you're enjoying them. 
and you're not thinking of work or anything else, when you're eating your food, you're enjoying your food. Wow. So when you practice these methods, you enter into heart locking and heart coherence. So we're going to do a quick activation now. I, I think we've got enough time. Um, we're just going to breathe in. So just stop for a minute, feel your feet on the floor. And let go of the busyness just for one minute with me, one minute with Justin. And just take it, three deep breaths and just sense them moving through your body. Stay in with the breath. All is well. Enjoying the moment that now is beautiful. You're in Jesus. Now you can add to it, Jesus, I'm in you. Breathing in. And you're in me. Breathing out. We are one. Now just focus on the breath. Just feel the love that's there. In that breath, there is love. In that breath, there is peace. And allow that peace to move through your body. Let your emotions settle, knowing that all is well. Wow. Okay. Okay, very gently come back to me. So, coming back to what we're talking about. That was a one minute. We only did one minute. Josh, if we can come back to the screen. When you turned into that awareness of the joy and beauty of now, you created that coherent wave pattern. Now, that's when you keep going, your brain will start to get infused knowledge from the divine. Ideas will flow to you. from the Lord. That's why it says, be still and know. When you enter into this coherent pattern, your heart opens to infuse knowledge, where you get ideas for your business and you can turn your heart then, your cardionosis towards the timeline, to choose the timeline or a technology, and you can access higher consciousness or higher knowledge. Okay, so, Beautiful. So get to know yourself. And the process to do that is meditation. Meditation is the art of consciousness. Meditation is the art of awareness. It's not new age. It's throughout the Bible. I've got whole teachings on it in the Bible. It's very biblical. Okay. And Jews love it. Jews do it. So Jews, if Jews do it, it's part of our history. All right. Okay. So now the next level of cardionosis is on other people. So, Josh, if we can get back onto the slides. Once you get your heart and brain into sync, you can now start to know God's thoughts, your thoughts, and now you can turn them to other people. So next slide. You go into a coherent state. You can see how quick it is. Through a very short period of meditation, you'll enter into psycho physiological coherence with increased harmony in yourself, mental and emotional. Okay, when we enter into that state, we're ready for life, okay? Next slide. This is where our brain waves activate. I've, I've shown you this before. Alpha, theta, delta, and genius brain waves, gamma waves, and epsilon waves. When we get into the heart space, heartscape, when we get into the coherent energy, you will start to broadcast different levels of genius. Every human being is a genius. You just have to learn to access it. Because remember, we're one. You are one with the mind of God. You are beyond IQ. Okay, next slide. So yeah, it all opens up for you from that realm. Keep going, Josh. So what they found is, as you enter into these coherent states, your body and people you love will synchronize heart rate variability and your energy fields will go into coherent state. It happens with babies and mothers. They will be in a heart coherence. That's why mothers often know 
what a child is thinking is they're in a coherent state they don't need to speak english or any language for the mum to know she can read their energy field and the child can read the parent as well next slide it's the same with animals there's an amazing study on a thousand dogs that knew when their owners were coming home but children's heart rates and animal heart rates if they've got a loving relationship will interface and you can read each other's thoughts through the field so you can be able to hear your dog and i've had this happen i'll tell you a funny story while we're on this topic i um took my dog for a walk at the last house and a cat jumped out at this certain part of the walk freaked our dog out um teddy and teddy was freaked out now the next time i went for a walk i'd forgotten this had happened and i'm walking along and i keep thinking someone's going to jump out on me someone's going to jump out on me and i'm looking around and i'm going why do i feel like i'm about to be attacked and then i realized i was heart locked in with teddy and teddy was feeling the fear from the last time we walked there where the cat jumped out so what i did was i unlocked my heart from his and i stopped feeling afraid and i gave him a hug and i said it's all okay buddy so you can actually unlock your heart by way from someone if they're feeling an emotion you don't want you can put a field between you and them i do this all the time when i'm walking through downtown cardiff or through stores if i'm walking past like a very bad environment um i will put a field of shalom around myself so that i can't read them otherwise i get bombarded by thoughts energy emotions but what, what i did with teddy i disconnected my heart lock in and i stopped feeling anxious and i laughed i realized i was feeling teddy's heart so you can actually become cardiognostic with animals it works very strongly with horses wow hey Oof. wow wow oh whoa while i'm thinking about this i'll mention one other thing it works with objects as well if you're in a coherent state you know they sometimes get psychics to feel objects from a crime scene i've discovered it works for us as well um i was in canada years ago and i walked past the book table and i saw trees and colors and blossoms and colors come out of a book and i stopped the people with me they thought i was well weird i said did you guys see that i went over to this book and on the cover the cover matched what i saw it was colored blossoms and trees and i put my hand on the book and i could see the couple who'd written it an old couple and i loved the feeling of them and i actually drank the book by touching the book so i've also done this with food strangely enough you could do it with food and there's a whole science called kinesiology which looks at this where it shows that your field can read objects and in fact there's a couple of universities that can teach people to read books without using their eyes this is not a joke this is a real thing um it's actually online you can learn to read and some of the saints could do this you can read things using your field i know it sounds crazy but it's the absolute truth this is scientifically valid studies so what am i saying feel a book and feel whether the vibe is good on it do i want to i do it with films i read the film before i watch it because i don't want to waste time watching a bad film so when i'm scrolling through netflix i will read the film uh, here's a funny thing i'll do as well this is bad i don't know what you guys will think of this but when i'm playing fortnite and i'm gaming i will sometimes read how good the other players are to know whether i should run away from them or not <laughs> and many many times i've won a battle by reading the field of the other players to decide are they any good can i take them out or shall i run away i know it sounds like cheating it probably is um i once killed 30 players in one match that's amazing but i do it using this field that works even in computer games so i mean come on guys it's not cheating because we're designed to do this you know <laughs> how else can a 48 year old guy become a fortnite champ against seven year olds i have to do this guys they're so good they're so good at playing fortnite if i'm playing with them i need my cardionosis to power up i'm telling you now okay so so the next level obviously is reading people listen to this romans 12 5 we are many people 
but in Christ we are all one body. We are the parts of that body and each part belongs to the other. And again, Romans 12, each one of us is joined with one another and we become together what we could not become alone. So when we join with another person, we can start a group field. And that's what we do with our team. That's what we'll do with the volunteers at Joyfest. We create a field of union and heart locking. And that's where you can tell whether a person's on the same page or not. Because <laughs> they don't do the heart locking. OK, I'm nearly done, guys. Um, so an example of me reading someone's field happened in the summer when I was at um, Nancy's birthday. There was a guy there called Jeff and Jeff had a lovely face. And Jeff said to me, never met him before. He said, can I be your friend? I looked at him and I read his field and I saw this guy's an awesome guy. So I said, yeah, you could be my friend. So we've started a bromance. We did a Zoom together and I just took him to, where did I take him? To Australia with me. And me and, Je mm -hmm. me and Jeff went surfing together for the first time ever. We both went out there as big boys with David, took us out, David Von Blankensee. We went surfing. See, guys, you need cardiognosis and you need to be able to hear a person's voice and read where they're at because we haven't got time to mess around. I knew Jeff was a great guy and now I've invited Jeff to go to South Africa with me and I'm going to hang out with Jeff because Jeff is a beautiful, beautiful man and everybody needs a Jeff in their life. You need a Jeff. I need a Jeff. We all need friendships that won't betray us, that are beautiful. OK, it's the same with Nancy Cohen. When I met Nancy Cohen, she said, I know you and I've always known you, she said. And uh, I was like, what, what do you mean? She said, I knew you in the before. We were before together. And Nancy and I went straight to level 10 friendship. There was no dating, getting to know each other. We straight away talked about Enoch. We knew each other in the spirit. That's how it should be, guys. It's where we know each other in the spirit. I knew Nancy was as good as gold. I knew she was a good hearted woman. And we immediately opened our lives to each other because we both operate in cardiognosis. There's no messing around. There's no weird politics. There's no empire or control or manipulation. And that's why, guys, I don't say yes to a lot of invites I get because people and not doing it for the right motive. I'm not blaming them. But when people send me an invite, they're often trying to build their ministry, build their platform, build their profile or make money. And I tell you what, none of those are the right reasons to be in ministry. None of them. The right reason to be in ministry is because you want to create a better world, a, a world of love, and you want to land the blueprints of heaven. And I am so sorry that the ministry world's like that. And I'm glad that new leaders have been raised up today, like Fiorella, like Nancy and others who carry a heart for all of humanity and are not trying to build a ministry. They're creating a bright future. OK, so, hey, it's the same with business and money, guys. You need this for knowing business deals. You need it if you're invited to talk to someone in government. You need this ability. OK, the next level of cardionosis, if we can come back to the slides, is creation. So level four, we're nearly done. Level four, Josh, if we could have the creation slide up, is to feel the fields of energy around you. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have interacted with nature, but I've interacted with trees and storms and weather patterns. The first time I stopped a storm, I ascended into the clouds and the clouds welcomed me. And I loved on them. I wasn't angry. I said, thank you for the rains, but that's enough rain. Please, will you stop? And immediately, immediately the rain stopped and it was a massive storm. It's the same with trees. When I was in Idaho years ago, I had jet lag. I went outside the hotel and there was a beautiful oak tree. And I looked at the oak tree and I had a strange thought. I thought, this oak tree knows when the sun rises and sets. It knows the time of day. Suddenly the tree shimmered and I saw like an orange energy pattern come from it. It went into my body. And this is no joke. I immediately was fine and my jet lag left. 
and it shimmered over me and it looked like the leaves moved and it made a kind of shimmering noise. But immediately the tree responded to me with love and reconnected me to the time zone. Now, I was blown away by this, but the next day when I went out to be picked up, it was just after breakfast. When I went out inside, I don't know why this happened. It's the only time it's ever happened in my life. But all the trees and bushes let out colours and shimmered. So I spent the next 20 minutes walking round the front of the hotel, interacting with the bushes. <laughs> it would have looked hilarious to the people, but I tell you what, each one let out a different colour and I saw it move and shimmer and I was blown away. And it was like almost a frequency to every bush and tree. And I tell you what, one time, guys, I had an ecstasy. And after the ecstasy, for, for about 10 minutes, I could see bioluminescence coming off a forest. The forest was growing, uh, glowing, bright green like Avatar. And I could see it after one of my ecstasies. So I think God wants us to open up the ability to interact with nature. Now, they've already found that trees will respond to your words. Plants will respond to your words. Water will respond to your words. So using cardiognosis with nature. OK, um, next level. Let's go on. Oh, yeah, is interstellar beings and planets. When I fly through the cosmos, I use cardiognosis to sense what these beings are like, what the blueprints are for planets. Earth has a sensation that comes from it. It's Mother Earth. So the way Earth feels is kind, nurturing, gentle, beautiful, um, nourishing, safe. When you go to Mars, it feels rugged. It feels abandoned. It feels like there's been some kind of military activity or something. It feels aggressive. And Mars was often about warfare. And you can feel that. But I believe God has a blueprint for Mars. So it works with these. It works with angels. When you feel the presence of God in a meeting, you have to turn into it and say, what presence am I feeling? Am I feeling an angel? Am I feeling a saint? Am I feeling wisdom, revelation? What is this being or who is this being and turn into it? Because we've had some funny times, man. Um, years ago, one time Smith Wigglesworth showed up and the people in the room got really whacked, but only some people could see that it was Smith Wigglesworth. I had the same with Enoch. Enoch showed up years ago and only two of us could see it was Enoch. And um, the other day, a mighty saint appeared in the meeting. Everybody... But around us could feel it, but I could see who they were. OK, let's keep going. I'm sorry this is so long now. Um, keep going, Josh. So the next and final level I want to mention is the quantum field. Go back to the quantum field for a second. So right now around us is the quantum field of possibility. It's in wave pan, but we have the capacity to turn it into real events. What do I mean by this is you can choose the future that you want to walk in using cardiognosis. So you can look at that field and there's one field future where, for example, you don't have money, or there's another energy field where you are wealthy and your children are wealthy. We can engage the morphogenic field and the quantum field to create new realities. Now, the next slide is the mathematics for this. So you're right in the middle of that. The past light cone is where you've been. The future light cone is where you'll be going. And you can choose how you outwork that future line uh, time cone. So let's turn back to the board for a second while I land this. So I've already talked about it in this session. I skipped ahead. That's your past, all the events that brought you to now. And above you are all the possible futures. Using cardiognosis, you can create the timeline of the new earth. Or what we call the Kynos. Kynos timeline, where he makes all things new. So this is where you can escape the pattern that you've been in and go into a different pattern to engage in the field of the heart and engage in cardiognosis. 
So it's creating a timeline where you're healthy, creating a timeline where you're wealthy, where you have good friends. I did this with, um, with friendships. I've been betrayed by people and I said, Lord, I want to create a timeline where I have friends that will never betray me. And since that time, God's attracted to me beautiful, beautiful people like Nancy Cohen and others like that who will never betray me. So I created a new timeline where I'm not attracting the old mindset. I also created a new timeline of wealth. I said to the Lord, I would like to earn this amount per month. Within a year, I was earning the amount I'd put out into the field. So you can sense different timelines. But it'll take courage to embrace the one that brings you into a new flow. It'll take courage to do it. Usually there's a leap of faith to do it. Okay, so it's the same with moving house and everything else. So that's the five levels. One was engage in Yahweh. Engage in Yahweh. Two, engage yourself, your own body. How am I doing? How's my mind, my emotions, body? Three, engage in others. Engage in other people. Creation. Engage in creation, trees, beings, stars, galaxies. And then using cardiognosis to engage timelines. And how does it all happen? Again, it happens through a small key, which is union, where you enter back into that sweet spot with Yahweh. In you I live, in you I move. In you, I have my being. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. I am in you. You are in me. Now is beautiful. And I enjoy now. I enjoy my friendships and I'm thankful for my family. I enjoy my house and I'm thankful for my house. And it gets quite strong. Then from there, you can create or sense other people. You'll become aware when you walk past a person in the street, how they're feeling. And you start to live from the future, which is love. Love and oneness is the future. Amen. Well, I've covered a lot of ground tonight. That's an hour and a half of teaching. But I think it was really good, rich teaching, helpful teaching. And it's all stuff that you can try out and practice. Um, so thank you everyone for listening. Now we'd like to open it up for your stories of maybe interacting with animals or timelines or trees or questions. So thank you guys. I'm seeing all the